Hello and welcome back to the channel, I'm EVM and this is the Cupra Born. Underneath, as many people already know, it's just the ID3. It shares its underpinnings. But I think that's a benefit for Cupra because there's basically given Volkswagen enough time to iron out all the kinks, get the firmware sorted out and listen to feedback from the ID3. So they've stood back and gone, let's let them make the mistakes and we can hopefully not make the same ones. So for me, I look at this as an ID3 Plus or a, a next gen one. Fingers crossed because from the looks, I really like it. Let's take a visual look around here before we take it on the road and see what it's like. It has got a lot of ID3 to it and I'll show you the side because that's the most obvious one. But this for me is a lot better than the ID3 in terms of looks. And we are going to compare it against other cars, but we have to obviously compare it with the ID3. You have a much more aggressive front end. On camera, it doesn't look as good because it does kind of look like it's been squished up, like a test tube baby that's been left in the test tube too long. Cubit Farnsworth. But in flesh, it actually does work. Quite like the way that the lights kind of dip underneath the bonnet, or at least the front of the car. You've got this thin line going all the way around, which I'll show you in a second. In this color, this kind of really deep metallic blue, it really does suit it with the copper highlights, which you've got along here, and with this grill as well. It's got a very aggressive approach. You've got this aero that's not aero down at the bottom, and just a lot of little details, which for me, the ID3 was missing. But yeah, I really like this from that angle. This is its best angle and probably its best color. The side is, as I said, it, it's literally just an ID3. The side skirt, the way it comes up here, I quite like that little bit. This detailing, it just breaks it up and that's what this car is. It's a car of detailing. If you're a fan of getting in the back, just like the ID3, very practical. It's a good car for families. The wheels. Obviously this is a, a high spec car, so they're not all gonna have this, but 20 inch wheels with, and I'm glad that they've got all these plastic bits filling in the alloy wheels because you've got comically small brake discs and on the back, brake drums. Now I'm not bothered about the braking, that, that's fine, we'll come to that later on, but I'd like to see these wheels with just the metal spoke rather than the, you know, take the plastic out. Cooper should have Brembo's, but well, that's just me. Something which is, very unique at the moment with electric vehicles. A door handle. It's nothing that pops out, it's nothing that's flush that, that does this. It's magic. Charger is on the rear, on the driver's side. We'll come to the charging speeds later on. Oh, and before I forget, no point in opening this up. There's nothing under the front fruit, whatever you want to call it. So you've got this line which starts at the front and then it continues, it does have a little break there, continues all along the side. So it does break it up, you know, it's got some nice angles going on. And then this line continues all the way around the back to this massive light bar here. Look at that concave boot. Again, unnecessarily good. I like it and then I like the way it sticks out the badge from that concave effect. It just gives it a bit more of an interesting look. Again, copper highlights, which work well with this color. You've got the diffuser that's not really a diffuser, it's an aesthetic one. And this massive spoiler, it's like a like an awning almost. It's messy for some people, you know, you've got a lot of angles, a lot of mad sticky out bits, if you will, but it's a Cupra, it should look angry. It should look like it's gonna mow you down as you walk past it. I think they've done the best they could with what they've been given. Now the boot, it's effectively the same size in terms of liters as the ID3, but due to a quirk of a few different shapes, slightly more practical, weirdly enough. If a golf boot is big enough for you, then this is more than enough. It really is a decent family size boot. Big lip down here, and you can get a variable boot floor, but 300 quid extra for the floor. All right then, let's have a look on the inside. This feels quite nice. It's quite hard wearing, but it can get away with it. It's got a nice feel to it, a Cupra sort of steering wheel. But then you've got this haptic feedback button arrangement, which Volkswagen seem to like now, and it's just awful. Uh, we'll come back to that later though. But yeah, the steering wheel feels nice. You've got that, which if I put my foot on the brake, will turn the car on. 
So this is just your speedo. There's not much you can do other than, well, it's not a virtual cockpit, put it that way. The door, now this very hard wearing plastic, but they can sort of get away with it because they've textured it along here. Even this is slightly textured. So it, it breaks it up. You've got more copper highlights and you've got all oh, this wonderful bit where you have to press that for the rear windows. We'll, again, we'll come back to that later because this is a bugbear. Uh, this bit is kind of like an Alcantara feel to it. Again, nice little highlights, and little details going on in the cabin. And it carries along here to that bit where it's nice and textured. And again, it just breaks it up nicely. What's that to sort of texture there, Harry? That's nice and soft. Yeah, yeah, squidgy. This here is bigger. It's a, I think it's an inch or two bigger than the Volkswagen equivalent. So you get a bigger screen. Um, again, we'll come back to this because it needs its own kind of section on the video. Down here, if you push that up, you've got cup holders, which if I grab, oh, good door bins, by the way. Uh, if you grab that, that's quite nice. You've got a bit for storage. That's the key if, you, if you're bothered. A little bit loose, though, isn't it? I think big, bigger yeah, bottles. When it accelerated quick, that went flying. Uh, now, this is where you can put your phone. This car does not have wireless car charging, as in this particular press car. Um, so that's a bit weird. This feels really sturdy. I mean, it stays where you put it, although you couldn't rest on it. Uh, but it's got, like again, like an Alcantara sort of feel to it. Good storage down here, as you can see. So it's really deep. However, look at that charging cable. Let's imagine you've got, oh, I don't know, a water bottle. It's just going to instantly snap any cable that you put in there. So that's a bit of a, a design flaw for me. The seats. Amazing. Yeah, these are really good out there. Yeah, the so if I press that button there, it effectively massages, goes up and down. Again, not, not unique to the car, but it it's is quite nice. nice. thing, isn't it? It is a top spec version, yeah. is this particular car. So obviously there will be optional extras on this one. Uh, now, the glove box. What are we saying? I think they've done the ID3 thing. Yeah, right? half of it's missing. There you go. Wow, look at that, guys. You've got half a glove box because it's a right hand drive car. Kids' mittens will go in there. Yeah, nothing else. So it's. It, why? No other manufacturer has this problem. Tesla, Kia, Hyundai, uh, even Ford. You're driving along and uh, you can't see this. I have to literally lean over to see drive reverse. Not really a big problem because you'll just do it by muscle memory, like you do a kind of like a gear stick in a manual car. But. Ergonomics, guys, you know, he's literally hiding it. And then behind that is where you change all the, the lights. You know, So if I want to put the rear demister on, or the front demister, if you will, or, or put the lights on manually as opposed to automatic, it's hidden from, from view by this. In the back, doors basically the same as the front, textured so you can get away with the hard plastic sort of arrangement. Now, as always, you've got uh, this position of the seat for a very tall six footer and yeah, I'm, I've got a decent amount of space. Is it okay for you? That's fine, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, unfortunately, not so much near the, the headroom. No, the headroom here, but it, the worst thing really is, if I move into the middle... You're going into the middle. Close it. My oh. head's touching. Right. And I'm five foot ten. Right, so it's... Ooh. It's not brilliant. There's clearly a, like it's an a inch lip. higher. There's a lip. So this is for small children at best, basically. I see. And if you look here as well, you can't really put your feet... You have to put them either side again. And you're going to end up snapping anything plugged into the USB-C yep. ports, but it really does hamper the, the, the rear view and when you're parking or something like that. I mean, it's, it's huge. It's like a foot across. Oh, this as well. Yeah, it Almost does dip down. There, yeah. So rear visibility is not brilliant, is it's it? It's not, no. Um, but it's acceptable. Livable. Well, I'll start put the window up. Shall yep. we start with the unnecessarily complicated things? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. You have to press that rear button there if you want to put the rears down. Uh, and it's almost like what they've done is they've, they've saved out on buying one button. Not two. Well, no, no, because you've got to have a rear button. That's true, you have to, yeah, you have to have that. So they've saved thing. out on one button. Oh, switch. But it's, it's a problem that didn't need fixing. Jeez. Hi, Daddy, can you open my window? Because I can't reach it. No problems. I would look down without taking my eyes off the road and go, by feel. Yes. Yeah. So one operation. Yeah. Now, I'd have to go like that. Well, have I turned the rears on or off? Well, I've turned it, it on, so I have to look down. It doesn't tell you anywhere on here. No, so you have to look down, then put the window down, yep. and then if I want to do back. something with the front, or well, actually, it, it unticks itself. Ah, right, right, right. But how do I know if yeah, I'm... Yeah. Oh, what? Is that... Are you on it up a bit more? Oh, oh hang yeah, on a minute, it's gone back. Yeah, yeah. Should we move on to... Should we, I mean, should we move on to other things that need... This. Uh, yeah, this. 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 Now, I don't mind the touch display. Hell, no. I drive a Tesla. Yeah, yeah. But even in that, it's annoying that you don't have the basics. Volume... Heating. Yeah, I mean, who, yeah. Now, they've given you these slidey bits, oh, it's haven't they? it's just awful. And it's that big. It's, it's like yeah, an yeah. inch and a bit. Is it worth as well, then, talking about the other annoying thing with the steering wheel? 
Oh, the haptic feedback. Yeah, that you keep turning the volume up whenever you turn. It is very close, isn't it? So when you're holding it, where where the literally put the yeah, your yeah. thumb holds, if you will, is where it's touching the wavy thing as well. When you wave, it tells you what all the icons are called because it puts the name underneath. When you move your hand away, they disappear. They disappear. <laughs> I mean, ironically, I don't want to wave at it to know where the icon is for some. You know, yeah, what, just give me the give, tell me what it is. So this infotainment system... It's slow as well. It, it, it like Especially it. when you connect your phone to it. Yeah. And I don't mean the CarPlay stuff, because that's coming from no, your no. phone. So if you're on CarPlay and you go back to the main menu... Five seconds. It has been, yeah. hasn't it? Not all the time, but it no, is. sometimes, so. yeah. When did ever, anybody ever get into a car and go, I can't believe I've got to turn a knob? <laughs> yeah. So ultimately, that, that leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, I could Just like all the Volkswagen yeah, Group yeah. stuff. And do you know what, though? I mean, we've been... We have been... Well, no, it's true. It's that would annoy me. It. it would that annoy would, yeah, me. Yeah, it is but I, I would live. I would live with it. But I think it could be so much better. It's got CarPlay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So ultimately, that gets around it. Apart from the heating issue, it's that that that's enough for yeah, me. Yeah. Should we just get it out of the way then? This is a level above the ID three. Yeah. I mean, do you know the saddest thing about this about driving this car for me is that this could have been the ID three. Of the next gen ID3, certainly. Yeah. The ID3 in my yeah. mind was was such a, was rushed. a rushed job. It was rushed that, out, hence the firmware problems yeah. they had. That when we when I drove it, I was like, it just it doesn't feel like it's a Volkswagen product. It felt like, like that was the template that you give to everyone to work from. Yeah, I, yeah. I, as I, good I, as we could do I, in that I bet time. the people who were in charge of uh, the engineers, not yeah. the marketing type, not the yeah. people that don't sell it, but the, the engineers were going. No, this isn't anywhere near yeah, ready yet. No, no, Whether no. that's Volkswagen's fault or the people doing the firmwares or whatever. They rushed it through, know. didn't they, I think. And it is, you know, we say like we're really bashing the ID3. It's a competent car. It's just, it's just a bit bland. Expect for the money. No, it's, and not what you expect the money. The this, interior, however, especially. has proven that they you could have do done it. a lot better. Yeah, yeah. And that's what bugs me. It's not a case of that's bad. It's this is so much better and a fraction cheaper. Yeah, <laughs> who can believe that? It's not just the ID3, is it? It's their entire range at the moment where the Golf. interior seems to be a step down from the... You get the a Golf cream. R. Well, yeah, look at the inter- Well, Golf R goes past, so you're not sure it's a Golf R now, are you? It's... <laughs> yeah. How much is a Golf GTI now? You've just looked oh, on their website and marked 36 it and a bit. Starting at 36. People think electric vehicles are expensive. Yeah. The Golf GTI... This is cheaper. 36 grand. And I'm going to put out there, I'd rather have this. Than the Golf GTI? For 90% of the time, yeah. I think if I had to choose between one and the other today... I choose this. The reason being, this—I mean, for me, this looks really nice. A Golf GTI does, but it's a Golf GTI. I've been stopped so many times in this car with people going, "Wow, I haven't seen one of these before. What is it?" And it's not just because it's new. No, no, it's no. It's because no. it looks good. Yeah, yeah. So it attracts and charging attention. as well. People going, "Oh, wow, yeah, no, I want one of these on my company car thing. There's just none available." <laughs> yeah, well, that's <laughs> the I've got, they've got four in the country, and I've we got keep, one. We keep <laughs> reviewing cars no one can buy. If we're going around North Coast 500, yeah, it'd be Golf GTI. They would be, yeah, but how many times are we going to go off? But to live with, it'd be this. Yeah. So that's more fun, but this is far more livable and basically and you know, the same price. Do you know what? From 0 to 50, it's very nippy. I think you could, you it's know. It's got that instant torque nature. It has, of it. yeah. Well, should we see, should what, we that, see? what it's like? Yeah. I mean, it's got poor, can it? It has got poke, yeah. I think it's, it's quick up to about 50. It's got that instant torque nature. However, yeah. I'm going to stop. Short of saying that this is a Golf GTI equivalent. No, 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 it's not. not. Is it in no. performance terms, no. I mean? It's more of a Golf GT. Yeah, it's like a, like a soft GTI, isn't it? Yeah, it's a warm hatch. Wouldn't yeah. you call it a hot hatch? I, I wouldn't. W- I wouldn't, no, no. no. It, it feels darty, does a steering wheel, but it's, it's yeah. never, there's never any, there's never like a tyre feel through it. Yeah. So it's a short steering rack, it's pointy. It's a computer game to drive. Yeah, exactly. I think that's Force the Force feedback way steering it. wheel. Yeah. That's what this is said, which I mean, is a, a common across many cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's, not, it's, not I mean, the is. feeling through it is, is better than most. They've got the the, the stiffness and the comfortness of, of the ride, absolutely perfect for you know the category of car it is. Um, but yeah. I, I, I want, an, uh, I know, an R version of this. It's, that's what With it's, 300 brake or something like yeah, that. That's and what it's crying out for. Bigger brakes, stiffer suspension. Shall we mention the brakes then? Because there's a lot of criticism on the ID3 as well about it's got drum brakes. Yeah, well, I, yeah. Shall I, I stop? I, well, let's go a bit faster and then stop. Here we go. So I'm going to be doing 60. And stop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Let's put my eyeballs back in. <laughs> I did six or seven of them from 60, one after another, uh, on a quiet road, and I got no brake fade. So the brakes can't really be any stronger. Oh, the, sorry, they don't need to be. They, they, 
don't need to be on this on this unless you were, I don't know, you're not going to check, take this on a track, are you? Nah. The one thing that I think I, I have to say to anybody who's thinking about getting this, always put it in the heavier steering mode. You have got individual mode. Yeah, so but you, I mean, it, oh, yeah, it needs when you get in, you have to turn it on every time, which is yeah. annoying, but it's so light. Well, you could, I reckon if it's so light, if you blew on the top of the steering wheel, it'd just go yeah. around. So you can change that. Just do it every time you get in. Yeah. It is okay, maybe it's not okay. fun. Yeah, it's, it does wallow a little bit. Yeah. You know, I find it's best described as a six or seven tenths car. Once you, once you start moving a little bit too quickly, it's that weight that it just... Yeah, it gets it, a bit wallowy. Yeah, yeah. What would, what would change my mind is if they brought an R version out of this. You know what, I'm just, again, these. Yeah, yeah the massive part You see me do that, and then I'm just... You can't see. They are getting in the way a bit, and as we mentioned earlier, those rear quarter, they're but massive. It does make the back of the car very dark, doesn't it? You know what? I'm having, I won't say I'm having fun, but I'm having more fun than I have in most EVs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> back end stats out rear wheel drive of course in this particular version now they do do a bigger battery version but the downside with that is I don't think you're going to get that much extra range because it won't be as efficient due to more. weight yeah. and it's a proper four seater because yeah. the middle re re bench is unusable yeah. in fact when you were five up what, what was it when like we were five up uh, an adult in the back um, yeah it was, it, was, it was so uncomfortable we had to stop because the, uh, the guy was getting the neck pains but the two guys sat either side here, uh, they were fine. Right. So it's a, it's a four-seater? It's a four-seater, yeah. Three kids in the back. Would you, you do? I, don't, I bet you know, if they're on seats, you won't get them in. I don't think they'll be wide enough. Should we start with the uh, Snog Maria Void comparisons again with other yeah. EVs? Let's do that. This or the ID3 we've answered. Yeah. It's yeah. clearly going to be this. This or the E Nero slash Corners. It's a know, close one, isn't it's, it? It's, it's so close. I think it's very much down to just personal It's going to be like that, yeah. isn't it? I, I would it, probably go for the E-Nero because of the extra range that you get and the efficiency and the, the better back seat and the practicality. I'm but torn between. I'd have to go This is the better board. looker, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think this is going to ruin it slightly for the Cupra. Yeah, this is the one. For thinking. basically, if you can get older one anyway, the same sort of price range, or maybe even less. A bit less, yeah. This or the Enyaq, which is based on the ID4, which is a much bigger car, if, you, if it's a family car you're after, it's got to be the Enyaq. Be Enyaq yeah. I mean, that's a big car. Oh, that's a massive Compared car. to this, it's huge. Now, I'm going to ruin it even more for you. No. This is in the same sort of price bracket, although it starts a fraction cheaper for some, than the Ionic 5 and the EV6. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's both bigger cars as yeah. well. I, I think of the Ionic 5 and the EV6. I mean, they are significantly bigger, aren't they? Being the next, as, a, as the next one up. Yeah, next peg up. But it's the price bracket, it's the same, so yeah. therefore they're comparable. Yeah. We're not going to compare Teslas. No, I think that's just too much, isn't it? Well, it's it? another, well, it's 46 now for your cheapest Tesla model. And they start three. around 35-ish, don't Yeah, 35, yeah. 40, it's, it's, it's a different price bracket, so we're not going to compare to Teslas. So that's, again, the, the biggest problem this car has are other cars. Yeah. And how many times do we say that? It's, it's becoming a common problem at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really good car, and I can't really think of a massive reason not to get it, exactly. apart from the fact that I would prefer the others. Yeah. What should we get in terms of range then? I, I'm going to guess, because obviously the weather's been very pleasant whilst we've had this, so I'm going to say between 170 and 220. Yeah. As in winter to summer. Because I think like the ID3, even though they've tweaked it, winter will hit this range harder than a lot of other EVs. You reset this, didn't you, when you got it? Yeah, they got it, reset it. So this has done 640 miles. That's how much we've done. Yep, sorry, Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> And it's averaged 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Yeah. And uh, 450 of that is probably motorway driving. It is. Going down was beautiful. Coming back, heavy rain, and they, they did really drop then. Now, I'm just checking the specs on this, and yeah. it's a bit jiggly as this road, so I'm like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try changing the temperature when, oh, when, yeah, when the house yeah, 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 is, when the car's doing this. It's well, not possible. The trouble is, is, you've got to point your finger like that, and then you're bouncing, and then you've got to keep looking as well to see where it's going. Yeah. So the temperature's going like 16, 24, 22, yeah, yeah, 26. Yeah. Charging yep. is acceptable. It goes up to 130. So essentially you're going to get about 100. I guess this is where the Ionic 5s and the Kias win out because they can go up to 300. Yeah, yeah. it's a different voltage though, isn't it? It is, but it just shows you for the same price yeah, and you get that how far ahead they are. If you, you know, if you like the look of this... I think that's the thing, isn't it? That's about to say. Go for it. I think if you like the look of it, and it does look very... I mean, does, for me, yeah. I do like the look of it. So overall, we are saying it's a good car, it looks good for most angles, yeah. it's very comfortable, it's be, be very one, quiet. Be one I'd recommend to people. 
Yeah. If you like the look of it, go drive it. It yeah. might just be enough for you. But as soon as you say, have you tested that about that, yeah, yeah, yeah. it ruins it. So well, thanks for ruining that then. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're oh. welcome. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it is another up. punch in the face for a Volkswagen though. <laughs> like Skoda did. It's a bloody nose, isn't it? It is a bloody nose. Maybe that should be the title. A bloody nose for Volkswagen. Yeah. Let's let's see if I put that in. It embarrasses it. You know Quite what? It, it does, yeah. And I know it will anger some ID3 owners, but this wasn't out when you bought that. No, no, no. Um, I'm not. I'm not trying to poo-poo it, as it were. But look, look at that armrest compared to the British yeah, Rail yeah, one. Yeah. That's just one example of many. Right. Well, uh, thanks for watching, guys. And did you know that members saw this a week early for 99p or? Well, you can pay more if you want. They've got a time machine. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And there's members-only videos. That's amazing. And did you know that we do a podcast? I was aware of that, but yeah, I there we go. That. Yeah, 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 Even brilliant. though we have a, we're on a little pause at the moment. Driving yeah. home, O H N. A new series more. will be coming soon. It will be. Right, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Let us know what you think of the Cupra Born. We're done. We're done, yeah. Okay, bye. See you later, bye. Bye, bye. I think that'll uh, placate the SOBs. Yeah. What is that? What? A little SOB. Simpsons. Simpsons, yeah, yeah. What's it's it called? A, it's uh, the, the, the puppet, isn't it? Blamo.